I'd like to talk about setting up your studio space. If you've never taught before, just trying to figure out, well, what do you, how do you create the space to, to teach uh, can be uh, a big decision. So I'll describe what I have here, and also I'll describe uh, what I do for teaching outside and also teaching remotely. So in terms of teaching in my studio, the equipment that I need is I work with an iPad, I have a small speaker, a, uh, a Bluetooth speaker, and I use a small little wireless keyboard. Um, a speaker is really important because you need to be able to um, project the sort of sound that you just simply can't get from an iPad or from a, uh, a laptop computer. Um, it doesn't need to be an expensive speaker. I use uh, a Bose SoundLink and um, that is a, a really good speaker, but it also works outside, so I like that. Um, I use the keyboard, uh, the wireless keyboard with my iPad because I, when I write notes to the students on their notepad on FiddleQuest, it just simply is easier than trying to type on, on the iPad. Um, I have a small table that I use uh, that I place these things on and it sits off to the side of where I teach and I have a couple stools in the studio. Um, uh, one is particularly short for very small children, like four and five years olds. I just cut the legs down, and the other is uh, the rest are normal size stools for somebody like 10, 11, 12 years old could sit at comfortably. It's nice to have a couple extra because if they bring their friends, then they can sit there and they can often, I try to get them to engage in the music. Sometimes they know how to play ukulele or something like that. Um, I have a comfortable chair for myself um, that. Uh, the arms fold back and I don't have to worry about uh, you know my arms getting uh, constricted uh, but it's I'm sitting down throughout the entire lesson um, and that's a lot of sitting so it needs to be a pretty comfortable chair. Um, I also have a comfy uh, seat for the parents uh, or for a parent I should say it's just one uh, one seat um, and, and if they're going to be playing music then they'll also be sitting on a, a, a stool. Uh, I also have a couple other instruments besides a, uh, my violin. I've got a, a guitar and a ukulele that I often reach for. Um, I have a violin stand that so I can keep my violin right there next to me and be able to put it down easily. Um, I also have a phone tripod um, which uh, allows me to take videos uh, of the kids and that is a, uh, a really important accessory to have that most people don't have sitting around. Uh, you can get them off of uh, the internet pretty easily. Um, phone, uh, phone holders and tripods are, are pretty ubiquitous. Um, so as far as the equipment, it's, you know, it's nothing really all that um, unusual. I suppose for some people, what they're used to having is a couple of music stands or a music stand that they, and that they stand up, and that is not the way I teach. I definitely teach sitting down, but sometimes we uh, do go outside and we'll, we'll stand up then. But um, I like to be comfortable, and when I'm playing with friends, I'm often sitting down, so I figure why not. Um, so teaching outside, um, that has, uh, that's something I really enjoy doing. Uh, I've always uh, taught outside when the weather's good. Um, and um, I can sit on my porch or sometimes I go to the park uh, and I can teach there. Uh, that's when it's useful to have a, um, a device that essentially gets uh, um, uh, internet connection through, uh, through your phone. Um, but also, it's also good to sometimes just leave the, uh, the, the device equipment, you know, the electrical equipment behind. I always have my phone with me, so if for some reason I've forgotten a song or I need to have access to FiddleQuest, I can access it easily. But it's nice to uh, simply, you know, w once you've been teaching for a while with FiddleQuest, you know the songs and it's not too difficult to go in there and say, okay, let's, you know, what song are you working on today? And, and then you just work with them. Uh, as if it's 1850. Um, lately, uh, remote lessons have become more important uh, because of the pandemic, but they were something I did even before then, uh, although not as much. Um, I do remote lessons over Zoom, and more than not, what I will do is have the, the students will share their screen with me and also give me mouse control. 
um, and I have I have FiddleQuest up on uh, my computer, so if I need to, I can access it pretty easily. But by and large, I want them uh, to be I want to run FiddleQuest off of their computer, and so they I'll use the mouse and I'll um, start up the recordings if I need to, and have them play along. Um, it is very helpful if they happen to have uh, headphones uh, because sometimes if they're working with a, a speaker on their computer or the, the sound is um, loud coming out of the computer, it can interfere with what you hear. Um, it definitely takes uh, a little bit more creativity when teaching uh, remotely, as you can imagine. Um, Often I will, if the for if, if the connection is not great or I just can't, you know, get mouse control of their computer, I'll just play back and forth with them. So um, if they're working on a tune, I will simply have them. Uh, I'll play a phrase. I'll make sure they're muted, and while I'm playing along, I'll say, "Give me the international signal for I've got it," and they'll just shake their bow when they have the phrase. So I'll be playing the phrase and then they'll shake their bow after a few moments and then we'll, I'll move on and add on to that phrase. I'll go a few of those, uh, cycle through a few phrases, string them together, then I'll take them off of mute and have them play it back for me. Um, and it actually works pretty well and, and there's some built-in advantages to that because it really puts them in control of do I have this? Do I uh, have I got this phrase? They don't feel any sense of judgment or uh, you know is Dwayne listening you know really extra carefully when I make that mistake? It is simply them going I think I've got this now. Um, and so there have been some benefits to that um, and um, I think I think the students seem to, to enjoy being able to just be muted, play it until they feel like they've got it. So that's basically the setup um, for the three ways I teach, uh, whether it's in my studio, outside, or uh, remotely. And if you have any questions, shoot me an email.